Hello everyone and welcome to today's Prophecy Files Briefing. We're glad that you've joined us today. I hope that you'll share this out on your social media right away as we are bringing you some information, latest information concerning uh, what is happening in our world as it relates to Bible prophecy and the imminent return of Jesus Christ. There is certainly more that is happening uh, in our world that is letting us know that Jesus is coming and He's coming very soon. It cannot be ignored uh, by anyone and yet people are writing off the signs of the heavens and the signs of the times as if it's just normal activity. Let me just share with you a few things I think would be of interest to you today. And this is just a few things that I brought to the table to the briefing this morning. There's 141 earthquakes that have rattled the eastern United States over the last 30 days. Did you hear what I said? 141 earthquakes. Now, some of the people may write this off, but if you'll go back, we had an eclipse and everything connected with an eclipse deals with earthquakes as well. Could these be signs? I truly believe these are part of what the Bible calls the groanings of the earth and creation in the last days. Here's what this article reads in brief. While the Western United States is better known for its uh, active uh, seismograph activity, the Eastern United States has been quite rattled in recent weeks. According to the USGS, 141 earthquakes in the Eastern United States in the last 30 days. Most of these have been uh, in the area of New Jersey, but they have fallen, uh, gone down into the Appalachians and multiple other states that are there. The point is this, the New Madrid fault line was said to be part of what was taking place during the eclipse of several weeks ago as a connecting point, a, uh, right where the X of that eclipse was moving. Could this be? I truly believe that we're looking at the signs of the times without a doubt. Here's another uh, 5.8 earthquake in Taiwan. This is multiple earthquakes that have been happening there in Taiwan. And now we have NATO saying that they are preparing Lithuania uh, to be able to be ready for war in that area. If anybody knows about war, world wars, it would be that particular region of Europe. The NATO country of Lithuania is now preparing its population for war. Think about that. Not only that, but we watch as the nations of the world, including the United States, is trying to impose a peace upon Israel through a covenant between Israel and its neighbors. This is very interesting in light of the fact that the Bible says that the Antichrist will sign a seven-year covenant, a seven-year peace plan. There is a push like never before to get Israel to do uh, what Israel should not do, but will do in the future under the Antichrist in this uh, confirming of a covenant. And now we're looking at those precursors happening as the nations of the world are applying pressure. This is a very serious situation that's going on, even to this very season that we're in as the Jewish people celebrate Passover. Uh, President Biden has now said in a statement to the Jewish uh, people of the world and Israel specifically, and uh, that is a, a message of peace during Passover, but also a message inflicting a ceasefire and humanitarian aid, and if all things, uh, of all things, a two-state solution. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, from the book of Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous become great, the people rejoice, but when the wicked dominate, the people groan. This is very important because even in this note and this statement that came from President Biden, including uh, aid to Gaza as if it's not been, and then the push of a, of a two-state solution, these are the things that are causing Hamas to continue uh, to ramp up the pressure. And it has not stopped from the northern of Hezbollah lobbing bombs in or the southern areas of Gaza. Uh, these things are all continuing even as we speak today. And if that isn't enough, you're watching it play out on the screens every day as multiple states with multiple Ivy League colleges are now ramping up I, uh, the anti-Semitic uh, energy and agitators on campuses, the likes of which Columbia and Yale and Harvard. So much so 
that they're telling, one rabbi had to tell the Jewish people that uh, Jewish students that were going to that college uh, to stay home so that because of the threat that is upon their life. We're living in dangerous times. And let me tell you, history will repeat itself. As you're looking on the screen right now, we've got a split screen. One picture you see of what's happening today that's keeping Jewish students from coming to school. And on the other half of the screen, if you look in history, you're looking at Nazis joining hand in hand to stop Jewish students from coming into the University of Vienna. Is there any difference? There's absolutely not. You're looking at this antichrist spirit that is rising in this hour. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter number eight that uh, we are at a time period where the groaning of creation and the groaning of the Holy Spirit and the groanings of human beings because of their watching what's happening in the world, the suffering that's taking place. And yet the Bible admonishes us here to say that we are uh, not of this world's activity. We are people who are looking for the returning of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can find that in Romans 8, verses 15 down through verse number 28. This is important for us to understand because uh, in verse number 28, it tells us, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So since believers are enduring suffering right now, the Bible says that when Jesus Christ returns, we will enjoy the joy that he brings with him. In fact, the whole creation, this, this scripture says, is groaning under the bondage of sin and, uh, and the pressures that are being applied. But you can rest assured that when Christ comes, he's going to make all things brand new. It's a thrilling thing that we have to know that salvation has made us free from the penalty of sin because of what Christ did on the cross, from the power of sin because of what Christ did as he was here on this earth. And you'll find this in chapter six of the book of Romans and chapter seven, he made us free from the law of sin and death. And then ultimately to be free in the very, from the presence of sin in the very presence of the almighty God. The Bible says here in Romans 8, 22 through 26, all creation is groaning. The believer is groaning, awaiting Christ's coming in verse 23. And the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit is actually groaning in intercession through us and in our behalf in verse number 26. How important that it is that we take hold of the understanding of God's word in light of all that's happening in our world that's applying the pressure and people are trying to find out what is the answer, what's the solution. Well, there's only one, and that solution is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Preached from behind pulpits and the imminent return of Jesus Christ emphasized and preached with power in the time that we're in. This is important because the last portion of Romans chapter 8 tells us very clearly that these five questions are asked there. And the fact is, is that when he asks us the question, uh, can anyone indict us because of sin? And the answer is no, because we've been justified and are in right standing with God Almighty. Can anyone condemn us? The answer is no, because Christ died for us and he lives as our advocate at the right hand of God the Father. Can anyone separate us from the love of God? Absolutely not. Not even the devil, the Bible says there, the principalities, the powers, darkness, death itself cannot separate us from the love of God. I want to encourage you today, my friends, whatever you do, keep looking for the next great event on the calendar of God. It is the return of Jesus Christ. And when you're seeing all these things happening, the Bible says, look up for your redemption draws nigh. Thanks for joining us today. Till the next time, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon. <laughs>